Good evening and welcome to this Strategy and Resources Committee on Thursday the 11th of November. My name is Councillor Richard Siddall and I am the Chairman of the Committee. Before we commence the business of the meeting, there are a few housekeeping issues to run through. Members, the setup for this meeting is designed to mitigate for COVID and therefore I'd ask everyone present to work to the protocols agreed by the Council in the interest of everyone's safety. We are streaming this meeting live as well as recording and by being present in the meeting, you are giving your consent to being recorded. Members and officers, during each item, please put your hand up to indicate if you wish to speak. I will then invite you at the appropriate time. Please reference a page number or paragraph uh, refer, referring to the independence regarding the different... I can't remember, I've skipped. Uh, please refer, refer to a paragraph number <laughs> referring to the agenda papers, not to the floor. Uh, keeping your contributions as clear and concise as possible and ensure your microphones remain off when not speaking. Can I draw your attention to the notice on the agenda papers regarding the levels and advise that the fire exit is behind me? Uh, as some of you may know, there's been some changes in leadership of the council. Due to these changes, I will be resigning as chairman of strategy resources. Um, I've really enjoyed my time as chairman of strategy resources and I hope that uh, whoever takes over will enjoy it as much as I have. My final note is I would like to recognise and thank the work and the contribution of Councillor Wendy Stamp and Councillor Stephen Nunn, who have led the Council in the past year or, year or so. They have worked really hard and constructively and made a huge difference to the Council, and I think we should all commend them for that. They took over a very difficult time for this Council during the COVID period, and they've handled that extremely well. And I personally would like to thank them for the work that they've done for this council and for the residents of Malden District. So we move to item two, apologies for absence. Uh, Tara may have apologies for absence. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Apologies been received from Councillor Boyce and Councillor Lagan. Thank you. OK. Um, in terms of uh, item two, I'd also like to record that we have a member in attendance and the member in attendance is Councillor Chrissy Morris. Uh, could that be noted, please, Tara? Yes, Chairman. Thank you very much. Uh, move to item number three, the minutes of the 15th, uh, the 16th of September 2021, found on pages 5 to 72, are approved as a true and accurate record. I so move, do I have a seconder? Councillor Sway. Uh, if any member wishes to raise any matters of accuracy, they need to indicate that they wish to, and I would like to raise a matter of accuracy. Uh, on this, I would like to raise a matter of accuracy at the September meeting. I made an announcement regarding behaviour at the July meeting. Have I listened to the recording? I realise I may have misheard how I, referred, was, I was referred to, and I would like these comments to be retracted, and the particular comments I would like retracted from the minutes are the final sentence, which is the chairman expressed concern regarding behaviour at the last meeting of this committee, but he was not shown the respect as a chairman and hope this did not happen again. So Tara, could that please be retracted from yes, the minutes? Yes, sure. I would also like to how, say how sorry I am that Councillor White, who as a result of this has been the victim of abuse. And I hope that this does not continue. As I said at the last meeting, we all have to work ethically respect diversity, equality, and show respect. And we should all be working towards that. And my thoughts go to Councillor White. So can we agree those minutes via assent members? Thank you. So now move to item number four, disclosure of interest. Disclose the existence and nature of any disposable pecuniary interest. Other... It was uh, on the on the team's street. It was on the team's street, one of the officers. Oh, oh, right. uh, so I'll start again on that. <laughs> Disclose the existence of any disclosable pecuniary interests, other pecuniary interests or non-pecuniary interests relating to items of business of the, on the agenda having regard to paragraph 6 to 8, inclusive of the Code of Conduct for members. Members are reminded that they are required to disclose any such interest as soon as they become aware, should the needs arise throughout the meeting. Members, are there any matters of interest? Uh, Councillor Durham. 
Yeah, um, thank you, Chairman. It's a non-pecuniary interest as a member of Essex County Council for any matter that comes up relating to that authority. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Durham. Councillor Stan. Um, yes, the same, um, Chairman. I'm a member of Essex County Council, non-pecuniary, and if anything comes up in relation to it, and I realise it, then I'll stay to Councillor uh, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Stan. So now we move to item number five, which is public partition. I can't talk tonight. It's my own. Public participation, even. Um, I can advise that we have not received any submissions from members of the public. So we now move on to item number six, which is budgetary control, April to September 2021, found on pages 73 to 88. And this is going to be presented by Mr. Leslie, the Director of Resources. Mr. Leslie. Thank you, Chair. Table one at paragraph 4.1 of the report shows the forecast split between staffing and non-staffing expenditure and income. There is a total of £600,000 service expenditure variance forecast due to the shortfall of income relating largely to the ongoing COVID pandemic. Tables three and four of the report shows what areas make up the majority of the non-staffing expenditure and income respectively, so that these areas can be better understood. The main driver for the overspend relates to the management fee income for Blackwater Leisure Centre of £629,000. However, since preparing the report, the performance of this centre has been better than forecasts and it is expected to be a better year-end position. The working group will meet on the 2nd of December to receive an update of the latest forecasts on performance. Town centre parking has also not returned to pre-pandemic levels and overall parking is expected to be £100,000 down against the budget. A contingency of 371000 was put in the budget for COVID pressures and once this, grants from government's income compensation scheme and the improvement in investment returns are factored in, the budget variance is reduced to £112,000. Overall, this would reduce the general fund balance from 5.8 million to just over 5.6 million, which is above the recommended minimum level of 2.6 million. Thank you, Mr. Leslie. Uh, so the recommendations are set out in the report, but the committee notes the final custard 2021-22 financial position at the midpoint of the financial year. Do I have a second, please? Uh, Councillor Durham. Uh, I would now like to invite members to uh, speak or ask any questions on the report. Councillor Channer. Why is it these things always disappear when you're looking for them? Um, but I'm sure you will call what it is because it is an item and it's the waste... <laughs> Sorry, I'll take that off while I'm speaking. It is the waste and cycling, uh, waste and recycling, not cycling, but I can't speak. It right. must be catching. Um, and about the figure there, 181,000 and the extra vehicle. Um, now, I recognise we've had problems, but can you just explain a bit about the extra vehicle? Because um, there was driver shortages, and that seemed to be an issue for the authority or for the, the, the company. They do seem to have a lot of vehicles, so just tell me how that cost has been aggregated, if you like. And then what are the effects on our recycling targets? And I'm bearing in mind what we're doing also um, for other things like green waste and extending. But just interested in that figure, 181,000. Is that a contract um, amendment or whatever you would call it? Um, applied. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, so 181,000, there's more detail um, provided at, uh, I think it's Appendix uh, A, of the report that gives a bit more of a breakdown in terms of the actual areas where we've had um, pressures uh, from. But in terms of the additional uh, vehicle, we needed to put on extra vehicles due to the increase in waste that's been produced since the COVID pandemic. Um, so during the COVID pandemic, we've had about a 20% increase in uh, recycling. So the vehicle relates to recycling. So we've seen a huge increase uh, in that. I think largely because people are, are at home more, they're not going out, the waste is being induced in the house rather than out and about. So we've seen that. Uh, latest figures show that the recycling rate, um, or the increase in recycling is still 15% above 
pre-pandemic levels. So without additional vehicles to actually go out and collect um, the recycling, we, we couldn't be able to cope with the additional waste that's been created. Uh, on the positive side, there has been an increase in demand, uh, the price we're able to get for, for our recycling, which has um, increased uh, the expected uh, level of income for, for that element. And I think that will factor in uh, more towards the uh, outturn, the year-end report as we go. Thank you. So was it a contract variation? That's the word I was looking for, the extra vehicle. How is that a that's covered? So that was done yeah. through the proper route? Yeah, but that's that's part of the contract um, variation uh, that comes in where we, we've agreed to vary that and pay that for, the, for that time. Thank you, Chairman. Okay. Councillor White. Uh, thank you, um, Chair. Um, yeah, my query really um, was on the extra vehicle, funny enough, um, because I've got a resident in my ward. I have raised this with the waste officers um, who has their or did have their green waste um, collected along with their refuse. Um, and the, her husband died, so she didn't pay for a year, which I fully accept. And um, we were trying to get it somehow reinstated. Um, but I hadn't actually heard back, and I wasn't aware that we'd paid for a new vehicle. And I wondered if we have the extra capacity, whether we can reinstate um, this lady's green waste collection as it goes with the refuse, um, because she is very elderly. As I have raised it, there was supposed to be a meeting, but I don't actually know what the outcome was. And I wondered if I could be involved in any meetings with Suez to perhaps see if we could facilitate it, as we now have an extra vehicle that we're paying for. It's, it, it, Mrs. Green, do you, or Mr. Holmes, do you know whether there's still uh, availability in terms of the uh, garden waste recycling? Uh, thank you, Chairman. Sorry, not coming off. Yes, uh, yeah. thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, there is an extra vehicle, but it may ne not necessarily um, help with the green waste round. But what I will do is, outside of this meeting, I'm arranged to contact you, um, and I can speak to uh, the officer, and we can have that conversation. I might just come back. It doesn't get collected with the green waste. It gets collected with the normal refuse vehicle because it's one of the non-standard addresses. Okay, thank you. I will uh, I'll follow that. Another meeting with you on that. Mr. Holmes, uh, Mr. Uh, Councillor Dorr. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. It's. Um, <clears throat> I just really wanted to raise something, um, not particularly in relation to the figures we got in front of us, but um, uh, and something that I should probably propose as a growth item. Um, I had cause to uh, be at the Malden Cemetery um, yesterday, in actual fact, um, and was really struck by the professionalism of the staff there. Um, and I had quite a long... I have actually contacted Mr Holmes to congratulate them. But the comment very much came that, we, unfortunately, we're not able to maintain the cemeteries as they would like on account of the shortage of staff. So and looking at the cemeteries, A, it's something that almost every resident or, or a large number of residents have access to or, or have cause to use eventually. We all will one day. Um, uh, it generates £140,000 worth of revenue, could be considerably more. So as I said, it will probably be um, considered as a growth item for next year. But uh, it, the other reason for mentioning it is I wanted to put on record how brilliant our staff uh, have been in a difficult time. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Durham. Uh, Mr. Holmes. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, yes, um, happy to ha have that conversation uh, around the growth uh, items for the cemetery service. Uh, I know uh, Mr. Norman, who's on, on the call this evening, is actually doing a review at this moment in terms of the staffing of the parks team. Um, I have said that um, we obviously got the opportunity to, to present to members a case for growth, so we will make sure if that's to happen for this part of this year, year's cycle. And we were looking at doing work on the buildings there to again increase the services that can be held. Yes, there's a number of um, activities around the cemetery, some of them which, as you say, are adaptations to buildings yeah. and improvements. Some are about the maintenance itself, which may need uh, some additional resources. So we will look at that as a growth item. Yeah. Yeah, and if I might just might just come back, I mean, we all know there's a there's a, plenty, a, a pending planning application for a crematorium in our district, which is even going to be make things even more important that, that our facilities match what will be there, because obviously it will be brand new and... and yeah. um, uh, and we'll take a lot of business. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. That's Councillor Durham. Any other items? <coughs> okay. Uh, so, therefore, members, can we agree that by assent? Thank you very much. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, <coughs> so, we move to agenda item seven, which is supplementing estimates and environments. 
procurement exception, exceptions and use of reserves from the 1st of September 2021 to the 31st of October 2021, pages 89 to 92. Uh, Mr. Leslie. Thank you. Uh, this time we have two environments for the committee to note at paragraph 3.2.1 where legal budgets were moved under legal services to uh, better reflect budget ownership. There are two supplementary estimates to note at paragraph 3.3.1 totaling £17,500. These relate to urgent repairs that were required. And there are seven procurement exemptions at paragraph 3.4.1 to ensure procurement rules were complied with. Thank you, Mr. Leslie. Uh, so the recommendations that are set out in the report are as follows. So little one, that the environments that are detailed in paragraph 3.2.1 of the re this report be noted. Little two, that supplementary estimates as detailed in paragraph 3.3.1 uh, of this report be noted. And little three, that the procurement exemptions as detailed in paragraph 3.4.1 be noted. Do I have a second? Councillor Durham, thank you. Uh, members, do you have any questions at all? Uh, Councillor Shaughnessy. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Um, I would just like to um, ask um, Mr Leslie, if I may, Chairman, um, about the first aid cover on the prom it's on page 91 i'd just like to know what that consists of please um in relation to um when um some people at the museum the other day um someone took ill and um, and people weren't sure I, I wasn't there myself but people weren't <coughs> sure um what to do or, or what was going on so I, I would like to know that please uh, mr leslie uh, so this relates to ensuring that every appropriate first aiders um, around the area. So obviously we opened up our splash park and events, and this is just to ensure that there was sufficient first aid cover available um, for our facilities around that. So it's mainly relating to the splash park and events. And Mr. Holmes, I can su see you sucking your glasses. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 Chairman. It, and that is for a period of time in the busiest part of the summer. So we don't provide um, first aid cover throughout the year on the park, but at the peak seasons we do. We have uh, additional resources. I see. And may I have a quick supplementary, Chairman? Thank you. Um, so either Mr Leslie or Mr Holmes, um, could other people um, go to use the first aid, um, sort of, if they're not using the splash park? Uh, Chairman, yes, it's first aid for the park itself. They have to be based around that area, but they are available for, for anybody on the park. Anybody there. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chairman. Councillor Sean is here. Councillor Chana. Uh, Oh, thank you, Chairman. Um, I'd like to go to page 91, and it's bottom of the table, item 7. £11,000. I know this is an exemption for procurement rules, but Gypsy and Travel Accommodation Assessment Update. And it says additional work by existing contractor, which you undertaken by a different contractor, would result in technical inconsistencies in the final report. What exactly does that mean, Chairman? Maybe I'm being rather thick here but i had a little difficulty really trying to reconcile what that actually meant yeah happy, happy to expand um <laughs> it, it relates to um, ldp work uh, local development plan uh, work where we've needed to take on um a uh, contractor uh, to carry out some of the assessment. This is a contractor that um, used past assessment and also provided a lot of the assessment for, for the whole of Essex. Um, so they have that background knowledge and consistency. Uh, and if we used uh, another contractor, there's concerns actually uh, that they would have to undertake some of the work that's already been done by that contractor and perhaps would provide the consistencies um, around the, uh, the wider Essex area um, as well. So it's a cost and efficiency. Chairman, just a comment, if I may. Had perhaps the word LDP or a bit of explanation in that. It's not a criticism, but mm -hmm. then I wouldn't have had my mind yeah. sort of thinking a bit laterally, if you like. Thank yeah. you. It's quite a convoluted sentence as well, Councillor Chan. Uh, Councillor White. Thank you, uh, um, Chair. Um, just to say that um, Councillor Channer um, uh, raised the question I was going to raise, or part of it. Um, what I wanted to know was why is it so expensive? Because we only have. A handful of sites in the whole district so i'm a bit surprised as to how it's cost eleven thousand pounds just to do an update um well we really don't have very many and i would imagine you could do them in a day um so i, I just wondered how that that cost was made up um but it doesn't really seem you, you know very logical <coughs> Sorry. 
Dutton. Yeah, well, yeah. Um, thank you, Chairman. I, I don't have the detail to hand to answer that question, but happy to, to look further into the detail behind the what what it entailed in the in the assessment um, and provide that for you. Yeah. Yeah. The reason I ask is because we pay the however much it is a year into the travellers, Gypsy and Travellers um, payment scheme with this kind of council, I can't remember what it's called. Um, and they they were aware of all the Gypsy and Traveller sites within the district. And that's why I'm surprised because I think there's only, is it four sites we've got? I can't remember. Like, I think Licence have only got two, is it? Is this to do with the Penn Central and review of the, in the LDP, though, rather than what we have at the moment? So it's about what we might need in the future. Yes, yeah, so, so the, what we're paying for or what we do at the moment is what we've got. This is about saying, in terms of the LDP and in terms of our assessment, what might be the future requirements for the in the LDP. Good grief, 11,000 for that. Wow, that seems... Um, but maybe I'm wrong, maybe there's more work than it seems, but I thought we had a surplus before. Um... Okay, thank you, Councillor White. So, uh, can we agree? Oh, sorry, Councillor Durham. I wasn't sure whether you were scratching your head earlier. No, I think I was probably doing both. And actually, both Councillor Channon and, and, and Councillor White have sort of um, asked the same question. I was going to question that about Gypsy and Traveller because um, we don't have any sites actually that belong to the District Council. Um, the sites are all owned by Essex County Council. I mean, that is Wood, Wood Corner. Um, and j to, just to help out Councillor White, she's referring to ECT2, which is the Essex County Travellers Unit, which is a completely different beast altogether. ECT2 isn't involved with any of the private or illegal sites um, at all. ECT2 simply provides assistance for authorities in cases of illegal encampments on uh, publicly owned land, and it also works with uh, from a welfare point of view with the settled travellers on the Essex County Council site. So yeah. that's what we pay the paltry sum of £8,000 um, a year for. But I, I would say that I think £11,000 for a, a survey so does sound like quite a lot to me, but there you go. Thank you. Yeah, if, if uh, the strategy team can come back with more detail on those figures, then absolutely. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Councillor Durham. Uh, so can we agree those recommendations by assent members? Thank you very much. So we now move on to agenda item 8, 2021-22 uh, half yearly treasury management update on pages 93 to 102. Again, Mr. Leslie. <coughs> Uh, so the report provides a mid-year update on the Council's Treasury Management activities. Table 1 at paragraph 3.4.2 shows the type of institutions the Council holds investments with at the mid-year position, uh, which are banks, building societies, money market funds and the UK Government, as well as other local authorities. The Council also holds £5 million of long-term investments in a property fund and a diversified income fund. Section 3.5 details the returns that the Council has received um, with long-term investments performing strongly and investment income is expected to be £60,000 higher than budgeted um, this year. Table 2 at paragraph 3.6.1 details the occasions the Council's current account has exceeded £2 million as required by the Treasury Management Strategy. Officers are currently working with our Treasury advisors to bring forward a revised strategy for next year to increase that limit in recognition that the current account handles daily cash flows and is not a distinct investment like the other balances. Appendix 2 of the report shows performance against the prudential indicators that have been set in the strategy. This includes the fact that there was no borrowing required, average investment credit score was within target, and sufficient cash was available. Uh, so the recommendations are set out in the report that the members review the Treasury Management Report for compliance purposes. Do I have a seconder, please? Councillor Sway. Thank you. Members, uh, any comments or questions? No? Okay. Uh, can we agree those via assent members? Thank you very much. 
so we move to agenda item nine, which is 22-23 fees and charges policy found on pages 108 to 108. Uh, members, please note that in the report it says that the years are 21-22, uh, but this is for next year, not this year. Uh, Mr Leslie. Well, thank you. So that's, that's quite right. The policy is for 22-23, and paragraph 3.3 .3 highlights where there are changes proposed from the current policy. Uh, the majority of these changes uh, relate to ensuring charges take into account both cost of recovery as well as the market rate. Uh, the policy has also been discussed at the Finance Working Group. The detailed charges will be presented to a future meeting of this committee. Thank you, Mr Leslie. Uh, so the recommendations are set out in the report as follows. Uh, to the Council that the 22-23 fees and charges policies at Appendix A be approved. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Swain, thank you very much. Uh, members, any questions? on anything. Uh, Councillor White. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I just wanted to sort of ask what the commercial services box office was, whether we're doing a service to, to do box office collections for events from other companies. I was a bit surprised by that one, or is it where we're handling fees for like the lets and things on the website? Mr. Leslie or Mr. Butcher? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's the um, <laughs> yeah, thank you. It, it, it's where we uh, act as sort of the box office, a ticket uh, facilitator um, for these sort of events. That's the charging policy. It's whether we can um, obviously have the capacity to do that. And I, th I think that's one one of the questions, obviously, with the team is that actually what sort of service can we provide for the events that take place over there? That's one of the, the packages that, that we uh, potentially could provide. Does it make a profit um, when, when we're doing this? Yeah, I think that's one of the things you have to look at with individual events that take place. It's actually the cost to us, and uh, is it producing the return um, to us? So I think that's a very valid question, and it needs to be taken on a sort of event-by-event -event basis, and that's the sort of thing we're looking at uh, at the moment as well, to make sure the charges are fit for purpose and are, and are correct. Are you happy with that, Councillor White? Well, not really, because we shouldn't be taking on anything if we don't, can't be guaranteed that it's going to make a profit. That, that's my main concern, is we're supposed to be making it a commercial entity, and, and if we don't know if we're making a profit from doing something, stop doing it. If, if you can't be certain it, it makes a profit, then then don't. And, and that's, I think, part of the review. This is exactly the reason, yeah. Uh, Councillor Channel. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Well, obviously, we haven't got all the figures here. And I appreciate that, and as to why, because we're really greasing the, the principles of the policy. Um, however, Chairman, can I two uh, two questions really? Um, obviously, I'm taking it this has been through the finance working group. So, what is before members tonight in terms of the policy principles? Uh, is there anything strategically <coughs> greatly different from what that working group may have considered? E.g., we you know what changes were officers recommending in that working group actually altered or whatever? Plus, of course, I appreciate there's lots of things here where the market rate's being um, achieved or based on that, or that's the change in policy recommended. Um, what about um, inflation rate and issues like that? Because when you look at the predictions going forward, was that taken forward in the equation of some of these policy um, considerations? Because obviously, you know, inflation is a real issue and we want to ensure, um, you know, I'm not trying to... Um, you know, do the, the taxpayer anything, but obviously we can't necessarily afford if high inflation rates high and lots of these things may have um, costs um, applicable to the council. We need to ensure we're covering our bases, really. Leslie. Thank you. So, yeah, speak, going through the, uh, the working group, um, I don't believe there's anything that's uh, particularly material change, uh, but I'm happy, obviously, for those members of the working group to, to say um, otherwise. In terms of the... Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, in terms of the other um, question about inflation and sorry yes brilliant thank you yeah inflation sorry um, yeah what we have done uh, previously is actually uh, take the inflation figure to um, the next report which includes the detailed fees and charges um, so last year we, we used this uh, the figure came there um, so that was a plan to take the same figure um, this time but obviously it, it has increased the CPI and that will be of course reflected in the in the next report. Thank you very much. Thank you Councillor Chan. Uh, Councillor Doran. Yeah thank you I was just going to move back onto the the, the box office 
I think, you know, I know we're not discussing the, the rates now, but if we move much above 10%, the the, the, the venue organisers won't use us because they'll use Eventbrite, who charge 10%. So, you know, provided we're making a profit on that, we, it's something we don't want to lose because it's money for old rope in actual fact, so to use a phrase. It's finding that balance. I think that, that's the, the crucial thing in terms of these things, ensuring that we have a balanced approach and, and that we don't do anything that then you know, pushes us out of the marketplace. So, members, uh, can we uh, agree those by assent? Thank you very much. So we now move on to agenda item 10, which is the climate action strategy uh, found on pages 109 to 138. Uh, Mr. Dodson to present the report. Thank you, Chairman. On the 4th of February of this year, the council declared a climate emergency and stated it that it was the first step towards a cleaner and more sustainable council benefiting both residents and future generations. From March until now, the development of a climate action strategy has taken place. This work has been informed by officers from across the council and by members of the climate action strategy working group. The strategy sets out the local and national picture and the pivotal role of the council in taking action at a local level. Under the title of Our Home, Our Future, the strategy sets out five climate action pledges and a set of aspirations for the council and the district to focus on. The pledges are to keep the car habit, create less waste, show nature we care, be an authority that leads by example, and to have a strong policy commitment to climate action. The strategy also talks about the, the current strategies and policies in place that already support climate action and further talks about our partners and the engagement we wish to carry out with our communities, young people and local businesses, in particular giving young people a lead voice. We already have interest from residents, young people, schools, community groups and local businesses in supporting climate action by becoming our climate action friends. To take this strategy forward into delivery, an annual action plan will be produced and updated each year, along with launching a Our Home, Our Future engagement campaign. The work will be led by a climate action officer who's yet to be recruited. In conclusion, climate action continues to be a priority topic for government. The council is somewhat behind the curve in comparison to some other local authorities and would benefit from having this climate action strategy to ensure it actively reduces impact and harm to the environment and looks to build resilience for the future. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr Dodson. So the recommendations as set out in the report is little one, that the progress that has been made in developing the climate action strategy through the work of the Climate Action Member Working Group be noted and its recommendation for approval acknowledged. And then to the Council, little two, that the climate action strategy be approved and endorsed. Do I have a seconder, please? Councillor Stamp, thank you. Uh, members, uh, Councillor Stamp. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I think it's fabulous. I think this council's wanted to do something like this for quite some time. Uh, and I think the officers have worked extremely hard to produce this. A lot of background work and information has been uh, carried out. I'd like to take the opportunity to single out one particular officer, which is um, Georgina Button. She has worked tremendously hard with the support of uh, Mr Dodson and the, the rest of the team, but she has really pulled out all the stops, Chairman. Um, I think it's uh, a subject um, that is obviously critical to everybody, uh, for the younger generation as well as um, our generation's Chairman. Um, and I really welcome that this Council is engaging with everybody um, who has asked to be engaged with. Um, my post bag's been full, and I think it was me who really promoted this to come when I was leader, uh, to be come to fruition. And like Councillor Durham, I remember him turning around and saying it should have been in a long time ago and really putting the pressure on. But I would personally like to thank everybody and the members as well who has actually helped to push this forward. And I think it's important that we have the officer who's going to be employed to take this forward. We can't afford to take our foot off the gas 
oh, I think that's a bit of a, a faux pas, isn't it, or something? But you know what I mean? We can't afford to take our foot off and we have to make sure. And if anybody, members of the public and officers um, and members, have any suggestions um, to actually improve it, then please can we all get on and get it, get it done and stick together. Um, so I'd like to thank George Eden Butter, Button especially. We've all got a problem yeah, with our team. Right. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Stamp. Excellent words. Councillor Durham. Thank you, Chairman. I, I think we pretty much all now recognise that climate change is going to be one of the biggest issues facing humanity, us and our children, our children's children. Um, but strategies and words are great. It's action that we need, and I'm afraid we're seeing precious little action. We have no charging electric charging points in our car parks. We have, to my knowledge, no solar on our roofs. We are way, way behind authorities like Braintree, for example, and indeed Essex that are, I mean, Braintree are streets ahead of us. Um, so I would sincerely hope if we are employing an officer, and I totally support that, that we don't try and reinvent the wheel. There is an awful lot of previous experience and expertise out there that we should be dialing into. We're way behind the curve and we should use, be using other people because not everybody's got everything right and we shouldn't be making the same mistakes that they've made and the only way to avoid doing that is to speak to people but it's absolutely it's action we need we were one of the first people in the area to put electric charging points in the uh, in our car park this car park here and, and i remember looking out the window many a time to see you know, I was waiting for the first car that appeared and it was a long, long time and I saw the other day both were being used. But without wishing to quote Lady Thunberg, blah, blah, blah is all very well. We actually need to not talk about it, but actually do some things. Thank you, Councillor Durham. You, I'll come to you in a minute. Uh, Councillor Jarvis. Uh, yeah, the, the thing is, yeah, about this is, is we do have a lot of strategy being developed and we don't have the resources to implement them. And that's that's been one of the fundamental issues over the last year or so, is ensuring that we've got the resources and we're trying to change that. I, I know for a fact that Council Stamp has been working with our authorities and learning from our authorities to bring that expertise and to and to ensure that we are you know, using the lessons learned from other organisations. And Council Stamp has worked really hard in terms of doing that. So, yeah, we, we understand all that, Councillor Durham. And, and you know, we're hopefully going to make sure that, that it happens in the right way. Councillor Jarvis. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, uh, I know the comments that other councillors have made and would agree entirely that this is a very important uh, project, uh, not just now, but obviously over the next few decades. Uh, my, my question, though, is just that when it comes as a strategy to council, I think it will be quite important to have some sort of cost, cost information in terms of, you know, obviously recruitment, in terms of annual spend, or in fact any income streams and benefits. So I think obviously, uh, uh, whilst it's obviously a very good thing to be doing, it's very important to understand what we're going to be committing to it. I'm very well aware, as I'm sure all councillors are, of the fr rather fragile uh, sort of medium term finances this council may face. So it's right that we, even though this is a very laudable project, we should put it into context to know how much how much of a budget we're going to be spending on it and how, how much that impacts our medium term finances. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, and, you know, Councillor Sam, do you want to come back to what Councillor Josh just said? Yeah, if that's all right. Any, any other member wanting to speak? Well, yeah, so, yeah, so, no. uh, okay. So, um, Mr Dodson, I've, I've got you, Councillor Channel. Thank you. We will use this, this strategy to attract external funding. It gives us a platform to do that, and we're already in, in discussions um, with some funders around how we do that and how we attract funding for the, the aspirations that are within it. We don't have all of the budget available to deliver the aspirations within this strategy, but we need to develop them. We need to make sure that we're, we are attracting them, and it needs to be aspirational because whilst we don't have that funding now, unless we put these aspirations in and use it as a basis to attract those funds, then we won't be able to address the issues. There may be some match funding um, requirements on the council in doing that, but we will work very closely with partners as well across the, the county and wider, if, if, if need be, to, to put in joint bids, because this requires action by everybody. Councillor Jarvis? 
Yeah, just as a sort of supplementary to that, Chairman, I, I think that's, I understand that in terms of the bigger picture. I think in terms of asking the Council to commit to something, it would be a good idea to have a sort of financial plan um, that at least says, well, how much are we going to commit of the Council money before perhaps, you know, if, if it doesn't all work out, how much are we going to commit to this uh, of our money, so to speak? So I think those sort of numbers do need to be put together when, when Council is asked to agree a strategy. I fully understand the aspirational aspect, and I, I, we all hope that comes good. But I always think it's a good idea as a contingency to know how much is it we're on the hook for if the, the money doesn't come in. Thank you. Are, are those figures available, Mr Dodson? But those will be developed through, through the action yeah. plan. This is the overall strategy. The action plan will be fully costed yeah. and deliverable, and we'll plan that every year to ensure their deliverable activity within that annual. Thank you. And that's why we need the resource to do the work. Yeah. So we're going to catch 22. Uh, I'll come to you in a minute when uh, Councillor uh, Channel. Um, thank you very much, Chairman. Chairman. I think the officer that's been referred to is a growth bid, if I remember correctly, from the report. So obviously that's got to be agreed. But I'm interested in the um, engagement activities um, and obviously getting the community engaged because from what I've read and, and, and seen, this is largely going to rely heavily on community engagement and um, young people having an opportunity to be involved because let's face it, young people are our future and they're very well educated on this issue and, and will be a great asset to the way forward. I'd be very interested to actually see the, the um, constituent makeup of the community engagement group. I think it can be a changing feast from a conversation I had with Georgina because I've got some people I've recently <laughs> thought of and I said, is there a, a timeline on this? And I think we can get people engaged. So that's the point I would make. And also, um, Councillor Durham touched on it. We can't do it ourselves um, alone. This is about working in partnership, working with Essex County Council, a host of other bodies, um, those with knowledge, etc., and obviously partners that might want to engage with us in the community. I was very disappointed I couldn't attend the last workshop. I think it was the last one where this actually was considered then by the working group because I sit on it. That was due to family illness. But I'd just like to iterate the amount of hard work that's gone in and echo um, Councillor Stamp's um, comments regarding Georgina Button. I think to pull this amount of work, bearing in mind everything else I might be aware she's involved in, and also the COVID pandemic and issues like that, I would just like to echo uh, those comments because a tremendous amount of research and thought has gone into this but I do agree what we need now is the actions and those actions must be reasonable and achievable and we need to have a performance of that because people will as you've said chairman strategy is one thing you've really make, got to make that strategy come alive and then you've got to show what your outcomes are from it not outputs but your outcomes yeah. so thank you very much chairman Dr. Do you want to come back at all on that? yes thank you chairman um, yeah, this strategy provides a great opportunity to engage with a full spectrum of the community and it will give people a voice um, within it and a reason to come together to offer their time, skills and knowledge and to share their ideas with us um, and look at the changes that are required. And also, we'll be looking to them, they'll be holding us to account for this through that group. Um, so we're looking for real engagement. You know, we've said we want an asset-based community development approach, which is a term which really means the assets are our residents, it's the people in this district and it's those that we want to work with to, to further inform the action plan and to work with us to, to ensure that this is delivered. Thank you Mr Dodson. Uh, Councillor White. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, just following on from this, um, I have to say, Georgina's done an awful amount of um, good work um, and has put a lot of work into it. Um, but the things I've raised consistently during these working groups, which Councillor Channers um, partly picked up on, is that we need to focus on the things we can achieve because it's such a big piece of work. We can't possibly do everything. And so that's my concern is that we have some some outcomes we want to achieve but make them small and sensible not a massive overarching report that we've got no hope of making a dent in um the other thing is um we've got the funding from magnox to or to to fund a new employee i can't remember the figures but i remember, i think it left very little money for actual delivery um and i want to be mindful that we actually deliver and don't just have extra staff so that's another concern i'd just like um to take into account and, and and how we're going to stop this happening and the other thing is just say that the government um at cop 26 has um pledged millions of pounds towards nature and biodiversity and and in, improving the um 
the airflow in, in and farming practices. So hopefully that will do some good. Um, but thank you. Milton. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I, I think the strategy needs to be aspirational. The action plan needs to be realistic annually about, about what we can achieve within that. Um, we haven't secured the, the funding yet that the, the member refers to. Um, but we have got a, a bid in for 125,000 um, over over three years, um, and we're look at working with partners to look at how once that the officer is in place, we've developed the action plan, how we can attract further funding for the the, the delivery of that action plan. Actions are set out under the pledges, um, but they need to be refined into that that annual plan, and that's where that realism of what can be achieved each year will be based but in the context of those it needs to be aspirational mm -hmm. to to meet the challenges that that we're up against with the climate yeah uh, yeah i i i've not been involved in the in the working group but obviously i've had a conversation with with uh Ms. Biden about the, the strategy and i had that same concern about yeah how far are we stretching ourselves and and i'm reassured that our approach is is sensible and reasonable and, and will work um, and, and that's what i'm paying council staff Thank you, Chair. Allow me to come back. I've just put a couple of notes down. You start small. You've got to take the community. You've got to take everybody of all ages with you. You've got to do everyday things. We've all got to start and change. And talking about the cost to the council, yes, there will be a cost, but if we don't start to do it, there's a bigger cost to the world. And I think back, Councillor Durham actually alluded to that anyway. Um, I think it's important that we do start to make small small changes as quickly as we can. I attended um, the event in, in Braintree with um, Georgina Button and there was the most fantastic... One of the young people spoke. I won't mention her name because I don't know if I'm allowed to, but hopefully she'll come to the council in, de in December to do a presentation to full council. When she stood up and spoke, she was... Believe me, she was very tall anyway. She made me look very <laughs> tiny. But she spoke with such great enthusiasm and aspirations, not aspirations, on, on what we need to do, what we, how we need to take people forward, and if we don't take them forward, she spoke far better than what many speakers do. And, you know, within 30 seconds, I actually was brought into what she was saying. And I think if we have that sort of um, um, person, young person, you know, we are going to be in safe hands, but we've also got to do our part. And I know, and Councillor Jarvis is absolutely spot on, we have to balance it with the report. But we've also, it, it will be a cost to the council, but as I said, it'll be a bigger co cost to everybody else if we don't. Uh, and yes, once again, I'm going to congratulate Georgina Button on doing this piece of work. But yes, we do need to crack on with it. Um, but we've all got to get along with it and we've all got to do our bit. So thank you for allowing me to come back. Thank you, Cass. Um, and, and I agree with those sentiments wholeheartedly. And, and yeah, as someone like Mr. Dodson, but I probably did it earlier than him, um, I studied environmental science at, at the end of the 1970s. And, and I knew then that there was a concern about our climate. It wasn't a big thing then. But it, yeah, in 1979, I was there and you know, I was marching and all sorts. Um, <laughs> I won't go into that. Um, but but yeah, that to me, I knew there was a problem in the 1970s. Uh, but nobody really paid attention to it at that particular time and now we're maybe doing it a bit too late. Councillor Swain. Uh, yes, thank you, Tim. Um, yes, I mean, it's the the um, benefit of having a specialist um, uh, involved in this from, um, is that it is a complex, sort of complexities to it and working through the so-called pathways to actually achieve things um, is going to be intricate. Uh, there is also this big communications issue, which is mentioned, so that is um, another aspect or, or skill that we, we need in this person. Um, but as far as, um, and we obviously need to monitor performance of what is being achieved, but although the costs are likely to be quite easy to quantify in financial terms, the actual returns and benefits from it are going to be largely unquantified. Um, and will have to be based on judgment of what um, yeah. what is being achieved, what the outcome is. Yeah, thank you, Councillor Swain. Councillor Durham. Yeah, just just really very quickly. I think you know, we need to start. Um, we need to start at home. And if I'm not much mistaken, this building's heated by gas boilers. Is that right? Yeah. So we need to we need to get our house in order, literally, and be looking at that. 
but we can look, you know, there, of course there will be a cost, but we need to look at invest to save first, and there may be things there, because, you know, th this is really important, you know, we know even with a one and a half uh, degree temperature increase in by 2050, we, we will be looking out this window, we'll have a seafront view here, and Haybridge will be underwater, as will two thirds of the Den Denji Peninsula. So, you know, this is real, and 2050 is only 30 years away. So there is no time to mess about. But as I said, let's get our own house in order, and then we can start dictating to other people what they should do. And, and we are doing that, Councillor Durham. And, and we had a capital bid that I questioned because it seemed a bit strange in terms of our, our climate change strategy. strategy. Um, and, and, and therefore that's gone to, to look at in more detail. So it is something that we all, you know, as a council, we need to ensure that we're setting the example. Um, and, and everybody, I think, is committed to that. Councillor staff. Chairman, if you'd like allow me to come back one final time, I'd like to reassure Councillor Durham that, yes, it was only in term uh, for one year, but there was lots of projects and hard work that this council has been doing that will come to fruition in the next few months, hopefully, depending on how members support them. The officers have done a lot of hard work behind the scenes, and talking about the building, there's lots of things I can't talk about, but what I will say is everything you're raising and the areas of concerns you have are being addressed, and hopefully very soon I'll look at the officers, the director, directors even, um, they will actually be bringing papers to council. So it, it is in hand, Councillor Durham, but I, I welcome you raising those points. And Thank you. Councillor Durham, you will, you will be part of that working group. So. OK, uh, so the, uh, the, the the two recommendations is, is, is little one is, is to the committee and little two is to council. Um, and that is the strategy be approved and endorsed, which has got to go to full council. Uh, do we agree that via assent? Thank you very much. Uh, so we move now to agenda item 11, and that's a rural settlement list found on pages 139 to 142. And um, the screen customer, community and caseworker manager is going to present this, Mrs. Green. Thank you, Chairman. Um, on the amount of relief that we can grant um, in respect of uh, business rate relief for rural businesses, um, can only be granted if we publish an annual list of those settlements. So the report that's in front of you this evening is the list which we have to refresh annually. And the list is the same as the list was presented last year because there haven't been any significant changes to either the size or the areas of the settlements um, to which this scheme relates. The rural settlement relief um, relates to um, post offices or pubs that are in a rural settlement where they have below 300 residents. So as you'll see from Appendix A, there's a list of those particular settlements. Um, as I said, this has to be refreshed annually and approved by members on an annual basis. So this is report is just for us members to approve that list. Thank you, Mrs. Green. And so the recommendation is set out in the report is as follows, that the rural, rural settlement list attached as Appendix A be approved. Do I have a seconder, please? Councillor Stamp, thank you. Uh, any comments, members? Uh, Councillor White. Just a quickie. Um, is it supposed to be 3,000 residents rather than 300, or am I not awake tonight? Sorry? Apologies, members, it was 3,000. <laughs> yeah, I did wonder. I thought even, I thought even little Totten doesn't fit that. <laughs> any other questions? Okay. Thank you very much. So, uh, members, can we agree that by assent? Thank you very much. So, we move to agenda item 12, which is the marketing and communications strategy progress update found on pages 143 to 164. Uh, Mr. Dodson. Thank you, Chairman. This report provides an update on the marketing and communities communications strategy um, presented in Appendix 1. <laughs> which was approved by this committee on the 17th of October 2019. Much of the strategy has been impact by the co impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, we've seen a significant shift in digital activity and have had to carry out stay away campaigns instead of come, come and visit the, the district um, campaigns. But um, hopefully officers, um, hopefully members saw the, the film that we made at the time, which was don't come now, but when the time is right do come so hopefully we 
promoted the district <laughs> while, whilst telling people not to come at that time. Um, despite the challenges we've faced since this strategy was approved, we've successfully adapted and changed to the needs of the service. We'll continue to update and reflect new insights, decisions, opportunities and challenges. As you'll see from the report, there's been significant activity and I'd like to commend the work of the team at both the quality and the volume of output that they've provided. Our communications, marketing and engagement will continue to be outcome led and drive channel shift where appropriate, continuing to embed our digital approach with partners and customers. Thank you, Mr. Thank Johnson. You. So the recommendations are set out in the report are as follows, that little one, that the committee acknowledges the amount of work carried out by the team to communicate COVID-19 guidance and the impact it has had on the team's ability to deliver any face-to-face -face engagement and tourist specific activities. Little two, that the direction of travel of the marketing and communication strategy be supported, acknowledging that where <coughs> possible, the team have delivered communications activities, and this is continuously being monitored as the pandemic guidelines and potential winter impact involves. Um, do I have a seconder? Councillor Durham. Uh, do we have any questions? Councillor Snap. Uh, yes, thank you, um, Mr Chairman. Um, I don't know if it's the appropriate time to bring it up, but I'm going to bang on about this like I normally do, and that's not having anybody to man the phones. I noticed the word channel shift uh, and that we're all wanting to go digitally. I brought a letter of complaint that I gladly gave to Mr Holmes tonight, um, which was delivered to my home address. Uh, yet another uh, resident cannot get through to the council. Not everybody can get through online. Um, it's the same old drum chairman, I say it every time. And there's one thing that I'm very disappointed I never managed to achieve in the year I was the leader of this council, and that is to get some funding, that we have our phone lines opened up and the channel shift. Well, I, I, I agree that people want robots or bots or whatever they're called. I'm still a great believer in that we have some front-facing customer service and that our phones are manned. And I can feel that I'm not being very popular with the directors because nobody's looking at, my, looking at me at the moment, really. But I'm sorry, I think we need to do it. And I appreciate it's at a cost to the council, but I think the bigger cost to the council is the reputational damage. I walk around my own ward in Burnham on Crouch and people are all saying to me, we can never get through Wendy and we give up. And whilst they understand they're going to have the numbers to back it up, people just put the phone down. So I'm sorry, I really don't wish, don't want to cause uh, havoc and cause complaints, but I'll be banging this drum until the day I'm not in this council unless we can get the changes. I think it's vitally important we look at that and we put some resources in so our customers are represented. Not everybody does dig digital and not everybody has a mobile phone. Thank you, Chair. But the rest of it's fine. OK. Who'd like to take that? <laughs> Mr Hogan's. Thank, thank you, Chairman. I uh, heard that loud and clear. <laughs> um, we are doing a lot of work on looking at the, the data and seeing what the facts are telling us. I'm fortunate I have my customers manager sitting beside me, and Sue is actually doing that piece of work in terms of looking at the uh, visitors. Um, we're looking at the previous numbers before pandemic, you know, who's calling us now, lengths of calls and that sort of thing. So there will be a review. Perhaps I could ask them. Um, <laughs> so just to agree, yeah, just make a few comments. Thank you, members. Um, yeah, we have done some work um, on, on the data and we are currently using that data to inform a refresh of our customer strategy. Just to give members some reassurance um, that the average time that it takes us to deal with calls or pick calls up is about one and a half to two minutes and that's the data that we've got from April. So if a customer phones us, it is taking between one and a half to two minutes to actually deal with the call, to, to pick that call up. <coughs> So I appreciate that will vary from time to time as we do have high demands um, at times. But to, yeah, we are dealing with something like 4,000 telephone calls a month. And as I said, it's one and a half to two, two minutes to answer those calls. So I appreciate that isn't going to be the same for absolutely everybody's experience. But that hopefully will reassure members that we are delivering a good service. That's a yeah, thank you for that, but it's not covering the actual issue that I mean. Um, uh, and people put the phone down. So you, I'm not saying the council is not um, answering queries and delivering it. You, you, everybody offers a, and gives us a brilliant service. But my issue is that people put the phone down. I know it. My inbox, and I always pass them on to you and uh, Richard Holmes since I've been the leader. 
before when I was the leader and I still would like it looking at and you can put as much data in front of me and anybody else can but the real issue is is what people are actually saying to me so I'm still banging the drum chairman until you shut me up thank no, you and, and, and we yeah I, I'm on that same banging drum as you know <laughs> um and, and and it is about finding that balance which is which is the difficulty yeah and uh yeah the channel shift I think has worked and has helped um but there are still lots of people who want to speak to someone because they don't know how to use technology and things like that. And I can see your finger on the button, Mr. Holmes. Thank you, Gemini. So I think the customer strategy will look at all of that and it will give members some options. Of course, there's options to put staff back. That's for members to, to debate and decide. So we, we hear what you're saying and we'll, we'll make sure that's included. Yeah. Mr. Dodson, did you want to speak? Um, not to add anything on that on that particular subject but mm -hmm. but just to to say you know there, there's a, a clear difference between our marketing and communication strategy mm -hmm. and our customer service strategy yeah. yeah thank you but they are connected they are connected they are connected councillor durham thank you yeah i accept that differentiation um a week ago i was hitting this building for my covid booster jab and because I wanted to come upstairs, I just happened to have my land lanyard on, and the lady said, "said Oh, are you something to do with here?" And I said, "Yes." She said, "I suggest you take it off, because you'll be extremely unpopular." She said, "You would not believe the number of people that come in and rant and actually rant at the NH or the the people, the staff, the volunteers there, moaning the fact that they can't get there's nobody here to see them." and that they can't get any response. Uh, now, in a previous incarnation, I thought I would bring a, a business into the 21st century and introduced a, uh, a very expensive telephone system that allowed you to you know, press one for this and press two for the other. Um, and it ended up costing tens of thousands of pounds in lost business literally tens of thousands of pounds because people wanting to book events couldn't be bothered going through the whole thing and I'm afraid there is absolutely no substitute for a human being answering the phone and lots of people do not like to be answered by a machine irrespective of those that don't have the devices where they can you know press three etc etc I'm afraid I learned the lesson the hard way and had to backtrack and it ended up costing thousands of pounds but the good news is when you restore the public uh, the the person at the end hey presto the business starts coming back fact thank you chairman and i'm, I'm sure screen will be looking at that in terms of her analysis and, and report and we'll come back to the, 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 the committee with that data and that information and and hopefully we'll be able to make a decision and look at the resources councillor white uh, thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, mine really is uh, to, just to echo the same thing that everybody says, oh, you can't get hold of Malden. Even if you do, they never come back to you. Um, and that doesn't matter if it's enforcement or, or what it is. So I spend all my time smoothing over why the officers are busy. Um, so it, it does need addressing. And then also as a member, we can't actually get hold of anybody. And I don't know how many times I've emailed over this iPad because it doesn't work very well. And I have yet to get a response. So I give up. You know, I, I absolutely, nobody's going to do anything with it. So, you know, it isn't just members of the public. It is also members. Um, and there's a, I was actually going to ask at full council a question over officers responding to members' queries. Um, and the second question I have is my husband works for an investment house. Um, he works from home. He actually works longer hours at home than he does at work. Normally, he leaves quarter to two, seven in the morning and gets home quarter to eight at night when he's because he works on the West End of London. Um, actually, he's working longer hours on the three days he works from home. Now he's in work two days a week. But the point I'm getting to is, one is, are we monitoring the work that's actually being done? Because I don't know how their computer systems do it. They know when they're active and not just clicking a mouse once an hour. Um, and the second thing is, I don't understand why we can't get hold of members. They have their normal work headsets. I don't know how it works. They take phone calls through those headsets exactly the same as they do at work. And it, it's part of their contract. They have to be available on the phone. So, And if and they have to have also a, a mobile phone backup. And, and he said it's exactly the same as working in the office. So why does our council not manage to work like investment houses are working? I, I don't understand. You know, I, I genuinely do not understand why we cannot contact officers? Uh, well, in, in terms of the telephone system, I think it does work in that way. 
and there is an electronic system that will go to whoever is free at that particular time. So it does work in that way and they are at home on their headsets or, or they're in the office. In terms of my own experience in, in, in getting contact and getting responses from the officers, I think it's brilliant. I, 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 yeah, I use fresh service, I put things in there, yeah, sometimes I email, sometimes I use fresh service and usually I get a response within a day. Um, so yeah, I, 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 my own personal experience of getting responses from officers is fantastic, personally. Uh, cancel the, oh, so the, the, la the last one I would say check into is the waste query that I've waste rather an awful lot of time <laughs> then that, that's that's just the one of them and, and my my IT is another one there too that I can give you straight away and you just give up you're like oh well never mind would you, would you want a laptop cancel away no, I just like one that actually works. It gets stuck. It, you, you type and it takes 10 minutes to catch up with your fingers. It's really frustrating. I don't know what the matter with it is. but um, And I even said, I think there was a thing came around to members. They were having an upgrade of um, equipment. Do you want one? And I said, yes, please, but nothing. So I'm like, oh, well, never so mind. Perhaps Mr. Holly can get in touch with you. Yeah, so uh, Mr. Leslie can sort that out for you. Um, I'll the emails to you. But yeah, no, my yeah, I must admit my experience is, is is really good in terms of response from from Sue's team, from Richard's team, from from Chris's team, and you know, because that's where my a lot of my queries go to, and it's always been really really good, and and it's fantastic to get that support. And I know I make lots of my residents happy as a result of that. Okay, any other? Wait, I haven't missed anybody at all. Okay, uh, so uh, can we agree that virus sent us? Thank you very much. Uh, so we now move on to item 13, which is any items of business that the chairman of the committee decides that are urgent, and there are none. And then we move on to item 14, um, exclusion of the public and press. Uh, to resolve that under section 10, uh, sorry, 100A brackets 4 of the Local Government Act 1972, the public be excluded from the meeting for the following items of business on the grounds that they involve the light disclosure of exempt information as defined in paragraph 3 of part 1 of schedule 12a to the act and that's this satisfies the public's interest test can i have a seconder please cancel this way thank you so we're just going to wait for the live stream to go off <laughs> 